Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our Daily Devotions with Pastor Sutton on this Wednesday, February 15th. Everybody survived Valentine's Day, I hope. Uh, Nobody was uh, beheaded or beaten or, uh, you know, murdered in some other way. Not that there wasn't much suffering in the land, but uh, good morning. Glad you're here with us this morning, spend a little time in God's Word. Um, I would rather spend all day with you than do what I have to do today. I have to go to the dentist. It is that. It is cleaning day for my teeth. Yay. Um, that's all right. It'll be okay. I'll make them. I'll make them pay for whatever they're doing by having this beard. <clears throat> so. Uh, So good morning, everyone. Uh, Let's see who's here with us on this dreary, cold day. Oh, our driveway right now looks like an ice rink. It's covered in water because of the rain that we had, but it's water on top of ice. Bonnie was worried um, she'd have problems going uh, to take Zan to school this morning, but it turned out it wasn't wasn't all that bad. Um, But it's still slippery. I mean, you wouldn't want to hit it going too fast. the roads are fine. The roads have all melted off, and they're clear. But because it's a gravel uh, gravel driveway, it's it's rough. So anyway, let's see. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Glenn, good morning. Jill and John, good morning. Anne, good morning. Robin and Connie, technical difficulties. Well, you're here, I hope. Let's dine. You're back at the ballpark. Good morning to you and Karen. Doing a refresh here because I'm... Fairly certain there's more people than, nope, I was wrong. It's just that many. Okay, well, and to those in the background, hello, good morning. Glad you're here with us. Um, And to those watching later today here or Facebook, hi there. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, whatever. Anyway. Uh, let's, uh, let's go on with this here. Um, we'll go right, right into things this morning. If you have the Lutheran service book, page 295, daily prayer for individuals and families. Again, page 295. I have my treasury of daily prayer right here before my eyes. And so in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Our so- Our psalm today, Psalm 57, verses 1 through 5 and 8 through 10, Psalm 57. Oh, no, wait, pause, freeze gopher. We have have a commemoration today, which I, 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 you know, I always forget. Um, Philemon and Onesimus, Um, you know, that really long letter that Paul wrote in the New Testament that takes up about half a page in most Bibles, for which our um, resident Greek theologian at the seminary in Fort Wayne wrote the commentary, which uh, took uh, the whole letter and expanded it out to 250 pages with an excursus on slavery in the first century. Um, Philemon and Onesimus. Philemon was a prominent first century Christian who owned a slave named Onesimus. Although the name Onesimus means useful, Onesimus proved himself to be useless when he ran away from his master and perhaps even stole from him. Uh, That's Philemon verse 18, right? Because it's only one chapter. Somehow Onesimus came into contact with the apostle Paul while the latter was in prison, possibly in Rome. And through Paul's proclamation of the gospel, he became a Christian. After confessing to the apostle that he was a runaway slave, Onesimus was directed by Paul to return to his master and become useful again. In order to help pave the way for Onesimus' 
peaceful return home, Paul sent him on his way with a letter addressed to Philemon, a letter in which he urged Philemon to forgive his slave for running away and to receive him as you would receive me. No longer as a slave, but as a beloved brother. The letter was eventually included by the church as one of the books of the New Testament because it speaks of the forgiveness that Christ gives us. We're useless in the eyes of Christ when you get right down to it. But because he loves us so much, even if we run away from him at times, um, he receives us back as a brother, a baptized brother into him who is our Lord. So back to the psalm. Psalm, Philemon and Onesimus, back to the psalm. Psalm 57, 1 through 5, 8 through 10. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. God will send out his steadfast love and his faithfulness. My soul is in the midst of lions. I lie down amid fiery beasts. The children of man whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Awake, my glory, awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, Bob and Jeannie, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> Our uh, reading from Job today, Job chapter 11, verses 1 through 20. It's now time the, the third of Job's friends is going to speak. Zophar uh, speaks. So Job 11, verse 1. Then Zophar, the Naamathite, answered and said, Should a multitude of words go unanswered, and a man full of talk be judged right? Should your babble silence men, and when you mock, shall no one shame you? For you say, My doctrine is pure, and I am clean in God's eyes. But oh, that God would speak and open his lips to you, and that he would tell you the secrets of wisdom. For he is manifold in understanding. Know then that God exacts of you less than your guilt deserves. Can you find out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limit of the Almighty? It is higher than heaven. What can you do? Deeper than Sheol, what can you know? It its measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. If he passes through and imprisons and summons the court, who can turn him back? For he knows worthless men. When he sees iniquity, will he not consider it? But a stupid man will get understanding when a wild donkey's colt is born a man. If you prepare your heart, you will stretch out your hands toward him. If iniquity is in your hand, put it far away, and let not injustice dwell in your tents. Surely then you will lift up your face without blemish. You will be secured and will not fear. You will forget your misery. You will remember, remember it as waters that have passed away. And your life will be brighter than the noonday. Its darkness will be like the morning. And you will feel secure because there is hope. And you will look around and take your rest in security. You will lie down and none will make you afraid. Many will court your favor, but the eyes of the wicked will fail. All way of escape will be lost to them, and their hope is to breathe their last. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hmm. Zophar the Naamathite. 
Should a multitude of words go unanswered and a man full of talk be judged right? You say, my doctrine is pure and I am clean in God's eyes, but oh, that God would speak and open his lips to you. Again, Job is faithful. He knows that he is. That is not... Um, that is not in question here. He is he is faithful to God. He does what God has commanded. What God has asked of his people, he does. Um, remember, even when his children would um, have their parties through the night, Job would go and make offering for them, presuming that they had sinned, and just in case they had done so, um, he would make offerings for them so that the Lord would not be displeased with his children. Um, so it is not babble that he speaks. It is not, um, there's no There's no doubt in Job of his righteousness. And yet Zophar, like his other two friends, comes before him and accuses him of, of having done something that he's just not admitting to. Um, can you find out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limit of the Almighty? And, and Zophar is right in what he says. The deep things of God are higher than heaven and deeper than Sheol, longer than the earth and broader than the sea. Um, that, that if God calls you into judgment, if he summons to the court, who can turn him back? It's true. And he does know worthless men when he sees iniquity. And he will contemplate. God will contemplate inequity when it's there. But in faithfulness, iniquity goes away. It is forgiven. <laughs> this is, I, I, I kind of wish I'd pulled out the Hebrew here to kind of work through this. But a stupid man will get understanding when a wild donkey's colt is born a man. A stupid man will get understanding when a wild donkey's colt is born a man. <laughs> I, I think what Zophar is saying there, we would say man is an ass. And we are. We, we can be an ignorant, belligerent bunch. Um, and it would, it would be easy for me to point out such people, especially in recent times. Although... Uh, I don't have to go back very far, but I can go back in, in, into our history and find easily people. But point the finger at myself, at yourself. Sometimes we are stubborn as an ass. I can say that word. It's a donkey. It's in the scriptures. A stupid man will get understanding when a wild donkey's colt is born a man. If you prepare your heart, you will stretch out your hands toward him. But it is not in the preparation of your heart that God receives you. God has prepared your heart for himself. He, he uh, in, in your baptism, he adorns you as the bridegroom adorns his bride. He washes you clean and makes you pure. If inequity is in your hand, put it far away and let no injustice dwell in your tents. Well, that is that is sage advice. If you find yourself caught in sin, put it away, right? And last Sunday in the three-year lectionary um, in the Matthew, I think we're still in Matthew chapter 5. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. It's not that, not that God is calling us to dismember ourselves. But that when we find ourselves in sin, we, we, we cut it out. Stop it. Don't do it. And surely then you will lift up your face without blemish. Well, there's the problem. Because, again, Zophar is saying that, that you need to make yourself right with God before you approach him. But the truth is God makes you right with him so that you can approach him to bring you to him. That's how we talk about the cross, right? When the when when the sun is raised up, I will draw all men to myself. He says, um, "We are called 
uh, by the gospel um, and enlightened and, and forgiven by all its blessings. Um, uh, you will forget your misery. You will remember it as waters that have passed away and your life will be brighter than the noonday. And that's what Christ brings. Although it's peppered throughout all of the Gospels is the idea of phos or light. That's the Greek word for light, phos. But in John's Gospel, it is most prevalent. Um, the light is coming into the world. And the light is the life of men. Um, and that's what Christ does. Its darkness will be like the morning and you will feel secure because there is hope. You will lie down and none will make you afraid. And many will court your favor, but the eyes of the wicked will fail. Zophar is not wrong, except that he's telling, again, he's telling Job, you've done something wrong. Make amends. Um, make amends and make yourself right before you approach the Lord, and then he will forgive you. You have done something wrong, and I have. We've been born in our iniquity and carrying the burden of Adam's sin in our very flesh, in our very existence. Even if, even if we were able to make our lives perfect and never carry out an active or passive sin again in our, well, active sin in our thought, word, or deed, we would still carry the passive sin of the inheritance of Adam, the fallen nature of mankind in us. We would still be sinful at our core. And yet Christ comes shedding his blood upon the cross for you, forgiving your sins, cleansing you, washing, washing that sin away, making you white as snow, even in the scarlet wash of his blood, forgiving your sins and giving you hope through him and in him. That's the promise. That's the promise we have through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you sent Onesimus back to Philemon as a brother in Christ, freeing him from his slavery to sin through the preaching of the Apostle Paul. Cleanse the depths of sin within our own souls and bid resentment cease for our past offense. But by your mercy, we may be reconciled to our brothers and sisters, and our lives will reflect your peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let me continue after a little lubrication here with our uh, with with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are bold to pray, as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and for ourselves and others on this Wednesday morning uh, as I look to my little prayer book here for Wednesday morning Lord Jesus you are my ever living and ever loving Savior thank you for protecting me by your mighty hand throughout this night open my eyes to see the blessings that you have prepared for me today for the love of friends that will enrich this day I thank you for the ability to work and to serve others, I praise you. For the gifts to be granted me this day, I honor you. Keep me firm in faith, 
watchful in temptation, humble in my successes, and joyful in the face of afflictions for your name's sake. Without you, I can do nothing, but I can do all things through you who strengthens me. Help me today to, he to bear clear witness to the hope I have in your resurrection from the dead. Grant me your Holy Spirit that I may be dead to sin and alive to holiness. Use me, this, use me today to bring your gospel to those who are like sheep without a shepherd, so that they may learn to know you, the good shepherd, and find rest and peace for their souls in you. Lead me in the paths of righteousness this day, Lord Jesus, for your name's sake. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask your mercy upon those who suffer in this world, whether it be illness, mental or physical, the effects of age, the uh, torment of society, the sorrow over events in the world, the effects of age, illness, or injury. We pray especially this day for Pat, Lois, Ann, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Give to them strength and comfort and assurance through the promise and the blood of your Son, our Lord, even Jesus the Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotions to a close on this rainy, yucky Wednesday morning. But Christ has risen. You know, we live in him. You know, it won't be long. Transfiguration on Sunday for most of us, many of us, and then Ash Wednesday comes already and it's Lent. I think that's early. Not sure. But, um, yeah. I've been thinking, by the way, about what we're doing here um, during Lent, if I'm just going to continue through the treasury. Um, but if you have thoughts or suggestions, feel free to make a comment um, or private message me. I'm not saying that's what I'll do, but if you have thoughts about what you might like um, for our, to, to have with our daily devotions here during, during the time of Lent, during those 40 days, um, let me know, and uh, I'll, I'll consider what you suggest. In the meantime, God's peace be with you, and we will see you back here tomorrow, Thursday morning, for our daily devotions together. God's peace.